Imagine someone who was born in Ukraine, spoke Polish, had French as his second language, and only learned English when he was 21, and then became one of the greatest English novelists. That someone has a name, Joseph Conrad, the author of Art of Darkness, and many other great novels. The other striking thing about Conrad is that while he is usually labelled as the first modern, if not modernist, uh, writer of fiction, he was not an intellectual like his fellow novelist Henry James, James Joyce, Virginia Woolf. He was in his youth a man of action, a sailor um, and later a sea captain who sailed on a number of British ships to East Asia, Australia, India, South America, Africa. Uh, thus he had first-hand experience of the adventurous navigation he would later describe in his novels. Uh, in fact, Conrad began to write professionally only after he had left the sea, and by the time uh, he was nearly 40, it was perhaps inevitable that he should put his extensive knowledge of the word, uh, geographical, linguistic, cultural, into his novels, uh, most of which deal with the difficulty for Europeans to come to terms uh, with both other countries, other cultures, and their own inherited moral codes. Here, for instance, is Conrad's first impression of the East and its people. It comes from Youth, uh, a short novel whose story is based on, on Conrad's real voyage to the Far East in 1883, aboard the ship Palestine, bound for Bangkok. This is Conrad. I see it always from a small boat, a high outline of mountains, blue and afar in the morning. I have the feel of the oar in my hand, the vision of a scorching blue sea in my eyes. And then I saw the men of the East. They were looking at me. The whole length of the jetty was full of people. I saw brown, bronze, yellow faces, the black eyes, the glitter, the color of an Eastern crowd. Another adventurous voyage that Conrad set down to paper uh, was a trip he took on a small steamboat uh, up the river Congo in Africa in 1890. His mission was to find an agent uh, of a trading Belgian company who had gone missing or simply gone wild. Uh, that trip permanently affected Conrad's health and it left impressions that obsessed him for the rest of his life. Uh, what is so the brutal exploitation of both natural resources and native labour force uh, made him highly critical of the way colonialism was controlling uh, most of the Earth's surface at that time. In the essay Geography and Some Explorers, uh, he describes the exploitation he had witnessed in Africa as, I'm quoting, the vilest scramble for loot that ever disfigure the history of human conscience and geographical exploration. Now, Conrad had kept a diary, which he partly used for the short novel he wrote to describe his nightmarish journey to the heart of Africa. That short novel is, you will have guessed by now, Heart of Darkness. The darkness Conrad speaks of uh, isn't just Africa, uh, which at that time, and for a long time to come, uh, was often called the Dark Continent, but the darkness that surrounds men and women at the moment of isolation and crisis, when they're alone and cannot rely on social institutions uh, or receive moral codes. That moment is a test of man's integrity for Conrad. So powerful is Conrad's story, the myth it has created, uh, sailing to the heart of a jungle and simultaneously uh, to the furthest recesses of the soul, uh, that it has been successfully translated to the Vietnamese jungle during the Vietnam War in Francis Ford Coppola's Oscar-winning film Apocalypse Now. And the translation was possible simply because Conrad's story has universal value. It can be applied both to Victorian colonialism or to modern warfare. It doesn't really change doesn't really matter. A deep pessimism pervades not just how to darkness, but all of Conrad's novels. In them, the boundaries between civilization and barbarism, mental sanity and madness, are not clear. Yet, this pessimistic writer, this most pessimistic writer, was able to fulfill his schoolboy dream. That was, one day, to see Africa. This, again, is how Conrad puts it in his words. 
Now, when I was a little chap, I had a passion for maps. Uh, at that time, there were many blank spaces on the earth, uh, and I would put my finger on one and say, when I grow up, I will go there. Uh, there was one yet, the biggest, the most blank, so to speak, uh, a white patch for a boy to dream gloriously over. There was in it one river especially, uh, a mighty big river that you could see on the map resembling an immense snake on cod. It was the Congo River. It's just a good that when he grew up, Conrad did fulfill his boy's dreams and wrote about them for us to dream on over his stories.